Turn your Bibles to the book of John in chapter 15. John in chapter 15. Abba, thank you for this time and for your word which goes forth in power by your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for it finding lodgment in every heart. Thank you for ears to hear, hearts to receive of your truth that your children get built up, edified, greatly encouraged thereby and instructed in accordance with your heart, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. I just, it's been a great sense as far as direction. The Lord said to pause some and something that I've been speaking on for a couple of weeks now, a week or two, but he just said to tarry on this. I'm just in, as always, in purposing to be obedient. We're going to tarry here, okay, and spend some time as it concerns the subject of love the subject of love and so I title this for today abiding in love abiding in love we're at John in chapter 15 John 15 from verse 9 some of this I touched on Last week, I read, verse 9. As the Father loved me, Jesus speaking, I also have loved you. And Jesus goes on to say, abide in my love. Abide in my love. Verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. If you will keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. It's important to see the correlation. It's important to see the unity. It's important to see the connection between in keeping his commandments, that is the commandments of Jesus, being in sync with, correlated to, and pointing to, also doing what? Necessarily attached to and connected with abiding in his love. Why is there a connection? Why is there that Joining. Why is it associated? Why is, it, why is there that association? We see, it right, we see it right there in the context. Verse 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. All of a sudden he's talking about joy. So in abiding in his commandments and having love abide in you, guess what? What's, what's an outflow? What's resultant? What comes out? What flows from that? Joy. Necessarily, joy emanates. Joy flows from, from that. How I many you know joy is a commodity we could do it in great, in great, how do I put it now? <laughs> measure in this day, in this age, in this season, in the times in which we live. Joy that is not predicated on or joy that is not based on how things are in the world. Joy that is not predicated or based on situation and circumstances. Joy that is not based on what's happening in the world or in the culture. So that in spite of all the noise, in spite of all the din, and whatever may be occurring, guess what? In your heart, there is joy unspeakable, full of what? Glory. Because you know him. 
and are in relationship with him and are in union with him in love. Joy that's not predicated on, oh, are things rosy or not? A joy that's not predicated with eyes set on the S&P or the Dow Jones or the, or anything. That's not set on, with eyes not set on, oh, economy as far as, oh, is there inflation and, and the cost of things? And yes, things are. Things are rough, things are tough, and yet the prices, can we speak to that? Can we talk about that? Yes! But in spite of all that, in spite of what may be happening or what, what may be occurring, having joy. That was referenced in the class, healing class this morning. As a where Paul, Apostle Paul, Speaking to, touching on what Jesus was highlighting there, and we'll, we'll continue on here shortly. Philippians in chapter 3, verse 3. No need to turn there. For we are the circumcision. We are what? Another version says we are the true circumcision. We are the circumcision who worship God in spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus. Have no confidence in the flesh. Our joy is in the Lord. Our rejoicing is in Christ. Our rejoicing is in the Lord. He is the source of your joy. He is to be a focus of your attention in the midst of it all. That's the way to remain unshaken. That's the way to not be gripped by fear. That's the way to not fall into anxiety. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's the commandment. Look at verse 17. These things I command you that you what? That you love. Someone say love. Love. Love one another. Love one another. And this love is not just oh, in word alone. This love speaks of in deed and in, in truth and in godly sincerity. And I'd like to highlight just before you say, well, pastor, is saying, yeah, love one another. And it's easy to fall into that position or mindset or thinking where, okay, love one another. Well, it's talking about, well, in the brotherhood or in the family of faith or as it concerns saints or as it concerns disciples or as it concerns followers of Jesus. I say, yes, I can love them. They think like me, believe like me, agree with me. Everything is what? All nice and cozy in fellowship and relationship. Yes, good, great, but there's more. And Jesus himself amplified that. Jesus himself spoke to that. Let's turn to Matthew 5. Matthew 5. We've seen it, and we're going to see it again. We're going to look at it again, and I'm encouraging you to keep your eyes firmly on this and your heart set on this, in your disposition in engaging the world. Because the bottom line is, as disciples of Jesus, we cannot have our heads buried somewhere in some place and or sit we are to, in being lights to the world, we are to engage. We are to engage. No matter how dark it is out there, we are to engage. You have light, you have life. Eternal life. The world is in a state of darkness, corruption, hopelessness, depravity. 
And it's not enough to sit in some place and just say, well, I, I can see, I can identify, okay, they're this, they're this, they're doing now, they're sinful. And what, okay, it's not. From the beginning, it was clear to see, okay, sin entered into the world and death by sin. So all I concluded, what well, on this, we already know about Hamatia and Hamatano, sin. But it's not enough just to identify. It's important to bring light in the engagement. His name is Jesus. There's a message you have. There's someone you carry. There's someone who lives within, who wants to express himself so clearly in love to the world. And whoever you are sitting and listening to me this morning, you are not alone. You are not an island. You have people around you from family, from your spouse, to family, to kids, to grandkids, to neighbors, to those in your community, to those at your job, to those at the school, to those at the library, to those at the stores, to those in the bank, to those at the mall, to those every, you, you, you are not alone. You have people, people, and there are people who don't know Jesus. And there are people who are lost, carrying hopelessness. Knowing nothing about hope, being in fear, cringing fear, fear. What did Jesus say in Matthew 5? Verse 43. Oh, it pays to look into this and, and, and take time. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. It's not enough to draw the lines. Yes, we see the lines, we know the lines. You best know the line between light and darkness. You best know the line. But we have to be able to reach out and touch with the good news, with the same joy that you carry, with the same glad tidings. The gospel, the good news concerning Christ is glad tidings of what? Of great joy. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Did I say it? Is Pastor Sheldon the one saying it? Jesus said it. The Word says so. Love your enemies. What does loving your enemies or your enemy, what does it look like? Love your enemies. What does it look like? Jesus goes on to say, bless those who curse you. Bless those who what? Who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Put in more contemporary terms, do good to your haters. There be haters out there in the world, true or false? There be haters in the world that hate you before you, before you say a word, before you bring, before, just because you know someone and are in relationship with someone, carry him on your inside. His name is Jesus. Just because of your stance in faith, in true identity, your connection with God, your living relationship with God, you're already marked. And if you think right now is marking, there's more to come. We cannot be at a place or in a state whereby words trouble us. Name calling, shaming, labeling, all those things. And we'll see because it's about being grounded and rooted and grounded in his love. When you're rooted and grounded in who he is, his nature, his character, his person, all about him. When you're rooted and grounded in him, then you are steadfast. Then you are unshaking. And it can call you names. And you can be quiet for a moment to hear. 
And then, oh, thank you. Are you done? All right. Here's good news. It says, do good to them. What does that look like? Oh, maybe they're on there, do, 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 saying all sorts of things about you, slandering you, you know, I'm not slandering, saying all sorts of things about you, calling you names and whatnot. How are you responding? How are you answering back? With a kind word? With good encouragement? With a blessing? In response? In doing that, you're being a witness to the truth. You're bearing your light. You're causing it to shine. You're walking in love. You have the capacity to do that, as I mentioned two weeks ago, based on nature, the new nature, the new life you have on the inside of you, which is one of love. Can you do that? Would you walk in that way? Someone says, Pastor, uh, you're saying that, but that's, that's quite the ask. That's, 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 that's tough. That's rough in this world. And it's, <laughs> it's hard out in, those, in the streets and the world and in the culture and all that's going on. Pastor, I don't know about that. Well, he didn't stop there. He goes on to say, Jesus goes on to say, and pray for them that spitefully use you and persecute you. Pray for them. Do you know that praying for them has great impact on your heart, has a lot to do with your heart and your state of heart as well? Praying for them. In keeping your heart sensitive to the Lord, in keeping your heart, making, ensuring that your heart is not hardened or petrified. It's important. It's important because you're living in relationship with Abba and you're, yes, you're living for an audience of one, yes, and your relationship and your communion and your sharing with him is vital. You can't allow things that don't belong to creep in and have abiding place or space in your heart, e.g. hate, e.g. anger. For example, hate, anger, offense, that will stifle you, that will hinder you from reaching out in love to be able to communicate the truth. We're not interested in just closing the doors and locking the doors and not blocking off the leeway to have access to shared truth. And as we go on, we'll talk about, in the practical sense, what this looks like. What this looks like in engagement with the world. Pray for them. Pray. You know their names? Call their names. Why? Why? Why do you pray? Why should you pray for enemies? Why should you pray for the lost? Why should you pray for those who are in darkness? Why? Look at verse 45. that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. What does that mean? The, on the, running through the cross, under the New Testament, New Covenant. That you may be sons of your Father in heaven. Walking in love in this way and doing these things, as Jesus highlighted, walking in love in this way, you show, you display, you admit that, yep, yeah, you are the son of who? Of your Father. In walking in love, in displaying love, in showing love, you show that you are of your Father. You are sons of your Father in heaven. What does it say about your Father in heaven? Look at it. Look into your Bibles. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. God does not just say, well, you know what, sunshine, <laughs> just here, sunshine, not here, or rain, favor, bless it's just here and not here, why? 
Why? Because out of his mercy and out of his grace, born out of his love, the call, the, the mercy shown and grace revealed and grace conveyed and showed is not just to a select few, but is to the whole world, is to all. Not willing, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should do what? Come to repentance. 2 Peter 3, 9, that all should come to repentance, that all should come to saving faith, if you would, in him. He extends his mercy and his grace to all. If he didn't do it that way, if that was not the Father's heart and the Father's posture, then I dare say you likely would not be here today. If he didn't extend his mercy and his grace to all, then you wouldn't be here today, be in faith, be in the kingdom. How am I saying that? Oh, because I know your history and that you were so bad or so evil or foul, or anything like that, not of any personal knowledge. But Ephesians 2, 1 says, and you had he what? Quickened. Who were what? Dead in trespasses and sins. When you walked in time past. On that deception, being deceived in darkness, on that the lure and the, as it were, the rulership of the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons or the children of disobedience. But you has he what? Quickened. You has he made alive who were dead. Hallelujah. Same grace was extended to you. And so you can't, I can't sit somewhere and say, well, you know what? X, Y, Z, they are not deserving. Oh, oh, they're so bad. They're so vile. They're so evil. They're not deserving. Really? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whoever, believe, but not perish, but have everlasting life. In order to be able to have and maintain that heart posture, heart posture whereby you're open in being light, in being salt of the earth, and in being light of this world, to reach out in love and engage people in the world, in order to maintain that heart, it is important for you on a personal level, in your personal life, in your personal space, to know and to grow in the love of God. Right. You've got to know his love. Yeah. You've got to. Yeah. If his love is not prime in your life and does not have pride of place that is in your focus, in your attention, in your conviction, if his love doesn't have central space, spot, or you know, that accord or prioritization, then it's, it's possible you walk and just be aloof and say, oh, well, they're just so bad, and then whatever, they're going, you know, destruction is the end of them. Blah, blah, blah. But it's possible to find that where you don't really, you don't really, the Father's heart for the lost is not alive and kindled in your heart. Do you, do you know his love? Yeah, you have his love, yes. Love is in nature, yes. You're born of him, DNA, and all of that great stuff. But do you know his love? Do you know the love of God? Do you know the love of Christ? It's important to know and fully appreciate God's love. And so if there was an assignment I could give, take time this week and for as long as the Holy Spirit has you in that place and in that space, I want to know your love. 
in a real, Lord, in a real tangible way, beyond just words, more and more. You say, I know his love. Yes, in an increasing manner. There are dimensions to be had with him in the place of intimacy and relationship with God himself, the father of spirits. I dare say, is it possible to get to a spot, a space where you say, you know what, <laughs> based on my walk with God, well, I know the all of God, I know all his love, I know all, as, as those words are coming out of your mouth or you're thinking, I'm saying, oh, okay, well, you're already proving something, already showing something. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Now, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you know his love? Do you know the love that results in and is keyed and anchored in eternal life? Do you t appreciate eternal life as a fruit of his love? Romans 5. Turn there real quick. We'll, we'll, we'll try and close this out for today. Romans 5. I'd like you to dig in. I'd like you to Dive in, I'd like you to delve in. Romans 5, 5. Now hope does not disappoint. And of course, when you're in your study time, take it from the top, take it from verse 1. You know, take the, just dive in. All right, verse 5, Romans 5. So you get the context. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Do you know this? Do you know this love? Do you know his love experientially in your life, in your walk? The love poured out so richly into your life. Look at verse 8, Romans 5, 8. God demonstrated his love towards us, and I want you to take a moment and personalize in that. God demonstrated his love towards what? Me. Towards me. In that while I was yet a sinner, Christ what? Died for me. He died for you. I'm personalizing that. What does that mean? What does it mean? Focusing on his person. Focusing on the sacrifice, focusing on the finished work of the cross and the import, the meaning, the impact of that upon you, upon your life. Spend time. Know his love. Be grounded in his love. Appreciate his love. Abide in his love. Dwell in his love. In this way, you will maintain and be in step in consonance with his heart. Thank you, Lord. How do you get to see it? Matthew 16, as I it's round up, you can turn there, Matthew 16. You have to see it. You have to know it. You have to be rooted and grounded. Why? Why is it important to be grounded in his love? John 16 from verse 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I the Lord am? So they began to say to him, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, some say, oh, one of the prophets. And Jesus turned to them and says, okay, that's great. Okay, that's fine. Uh, beyond what people say about me, what do you say? Who do you say that I am? As you tarry in that place of learning of him and knowing him, he becomes more and more, and his heart becomes more and more real 
to you more and more in an increasing way, in an increasing manner, to the extent whereby, to, to all intents and purposes, life and your posture and your visage of life, to be told, will not be centered on you. It would be outward focused. It won't be centered on you, on me, myself, and it will be outward facing. to the world. And Jesus answered and said to him, verse 17, oh, before that, went on to say, well, thou art the Christ. Peter spoke up, right? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said, well, blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, it says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. What does he go on to say? And I say to you, verse 18, you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All of that to say, a few words here. Number one, we understand and know that the rock is not Peter. From the originals, from the Greek, the rock is not Peter. Peter is Petrus, and that is a stone or a rock, a loose rock. But Jesus said, on this rock, which is the word Petra, on this rock, I will build my church. The rock himself is Jesus. On this revelation, on this simple truth, that you, I am the Christ, the son of the living God, in other words, that he's God the son, that he's himself God, we have to understand and appreciate that. I will build my church, Jesus being the rock on which the church is built. Jesus being the foundation. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail. Saints, for so long it's been looked at to see or to perceive or take on that, well, the church is on the defensive. But the church is not on the defensive. The church is to be on the offensive, is on to be on the attack. What do I mean by that? In bringing light into darkness, in snatching, delivering, rescuing many who are bound by the enemy, who are in bondage, the strongholds of darkness, of sin, depravity, and all of that. We are to advance the kingdom. And the gates of hell cannot withstand, cannot overcome the onslaught. It's by the gospel. It's by the good news concerning Jesus. It's by the glad tidings of great joy. It's why he came. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And here at Hot Rock, founded on the solid rock who is Christ Jesus and banded together in communion as saints and believers, we get to advance the commission, the great commission to make disciples of all the nations. Mark 16, 17, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone, everywhere. We do it by words of mouth. We do it by lifestyle, by our conduct, by our conversation. We do it with everything that we have. Love is key. Love is central. Amen. The love of God, being rooted and grounded in that. The way to do that, abide in his word. Abide in his word. 
gave us an assignment a short time ago. Time's done. Abide in his word. Stay in the word. See love in his word. Tarry, abide, stay. If you abide in my word, he told them one time, then you are my disciples indeed. He told them in John 8, 32. Amen. Praise God. Would you all just close your eyes where you are right now? Father, thank you. Father, thank you. We give you praise, Lord, for all that you've done and for your spirit given. Thank you for your love shed abroad in our hearts by your spirit. Father, thank you for causing each and every one of these to be continually rooted and grounded in the truth of your word and the truth of your love. Thank you, Father. Thank you for great assurance. Thank you for great conviction, which causes us in turn to be light, just as you said we are in the world. Revealing you, displaying you, conveying you, sharing you to those who are hurting and who are lost. Father, thank you. Thank you. Now we get to do this with great conviction and in great power by your Holy Spirit. Thank you that of your fullness we have received and we've been equipped to do this with joy in our hearts, with gladness in our hearts, with glee and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.